Oh man, I'm feeling pretty damn lazy after such a big vacation. Hey everyone, I see how Jacob Scott here, and I'm. I apologize for my absence, but I am gonna try and make this as quick as possible. I will say the first day back after a vacation always fucking sucks. So I've got three episodes to cover, huh? Alright, let's just get straight down to it. As little of the promos as possible, and cover all the matches as I can. Now, the first episode of WDW that I missed, start off with a non-title match. Gabriel Pierce, his title is not on the line as he takes on TJ Salazar of Mexico. Now, Salazar, he has been gone for a while, and he's been trying to show, you know, hey... I'm a high flyer, I might have been brought in from the other people, but I can still fight. I can still kick ass. Well, Salazar was able to kick some ass, but when he tried to take over a shooting star, he completely whiffed, and Pierce was able to get him in with the critical buster with one, two, three. Simple as that. Gabriel Pierce still does not have a contender, and he still, well, I don't know what to say. He still doesn't have a contender. I do not know who it'll be, but we're just going to have to wait and see for that. And the next match that came on was Isaac Mystery finally getting back into the ring in a one-on-one -on -one fight against Cameron Rose. And I think we're going back to that thing that Isaac Mystery used to have happen to where he would always get attacked right when he's making his entrance. Well, Cameron Rose did that to test Isaac Mystery since as of late, the mob school has been to put over people, or at least attempt to, only if they earn it. But despite that little pre-attack, Mystery has shown that he actually deserves to be a champion one day, as he was able to lock in a mysterious submission onto Cameron Rose, who very oddly taps out. One, two, three, Isaac Mystery has that match in the bag. The next match was a WDW Wolf Chamber qualifying match between Gavin uh, Yeah, sorry. No Waluigi Watkins for me. Not this time. Gavin Watkins going one-on-one -on -one with Chris Bay. Now, as I expected between the two of these competitors, this was a very competitive match from two high flyers. Or <laughs> What am I saying? Oh yeah, Chris Bay did not get squashed this time, but the 20 Bay team splash was not enough for Gavin to be defeated, as he was able to defeat Chris Bay with a golden arrow and thus be in the Wolf Chamber. Wow, Gavin. The fourth match that happened was another non-title match between your LOA Wolf Tag Champions, the Wild Soldiers, that's Maximus Soldier and Bidoua Chad, Eww! Taking on the Vigilantes, where I still don't know what their names are. So for now, until we know just who they are, I'm going to simply call them number one and number two. And, wow, they really got the Vigilantes number, because all it took was a quick little pump handle falcon arrow onto Wild Side for the Vigilantes to get the win on this one. And I think the, vi the Vigilantes... I don't know. They're a force to be reckoned with, that's for sure. They say they've got the crowd support, but I don't hear anyone cheering for them. Now, the fifth match that took place on the episode were the Mohawk Bros going up against Leo Carr and Zinda Haku. And it's been a hot minute since we've seen Carr and Haku team up. Since, you know, Carr just wanted to take some time off for a brief moment there. Now, Roman and Juan were really bringing the pain, but... I will have to admit, they suffered a very rare loss. They they had the anchor dropped on them. That little sidewalk slam into a leg drop combo that Karn and Haku like to do. They dropped Roman with it. Juan was not able to get in in time. And there you go. Karn and Haku have won. Once again, as a tag team. Let's just see how far they can take this and hope they don't cross the vigilantes. 
The sixth match on our card was Billy Huggins going up against Tiger once again. Now, even though Tiger did bring his best, there's really not a whole lot to say about this match. It, it was actually a pretty quick one. I mean, Tiger was able to showcase what he could do, but all it took was one well-timed hobo kick from Billy Huggins to put away Tiger. One, two, three. Huggins is going to keep that momentum rolling. And that episode of WDW ended with Will Wildside in a non-title match against Sean Martin, your current reigning Wolfpack champion. Now, even though Wildside, Will Wildside, I have to keep it saying to myself, was bringing his quickness, showing what he, he has, what it takes to be champion, unfortunately, it wasn't enough. He went for that 450 splash of his, but Sean Martin was not only able to counter, he was able to draw Will Wild side with the beautiful makeover, and yes, that was not able to put away Will Wild side. What was, though, was a beautiful kick for the 1-2-3, and the three. no contenders for Martin. And WKW, on the other hand, after a little quick pep warm-up rally session about Mr. Davis saying how there will be two WKW Chamber qualifying matches. He didn't do much besides glorify WKW and demonize WDW. But then we got on to our first match. And, you know, I'm starting to get sick of this matchup. Cyrus and Mustafa Ali once again. We've seen this song and dance multiple, multiple times. Ali gets his ass kicked. Cyrus hits a seppuku drop. One, two, three. Granted, the finish came right after Ali got his little roll through X Factor combo clownered. And that's still pretty much all. I, I really have nothing else, and I wish I have nothing else to say about this matchup, and I hope it's the last time they do face one another. So then we had the elites going up against both members of the Ravagers, Jonah Barnett and Syndicate. Sterling Syndicate. That's what it was. I knew I was freaking something. Like I said, guys, I'm three quarters tired and one half drunk after such a vacation. Anyway, Jonah Barnett has clearly been the MVP of the of this of of this match. He was able to really bring it against both members of the elite. I don't really think Syndicate really got tagged in at all until the very end. And then all Syndicate had to do was drop Jeff Stathom, the thong, with that little jumping face buster of his. One, two, three. The Ravagers are really picking up the momentum, especially Jonah. Let's see where this goes. So then we had the first of two WKW World Chamber qualifying matches between Happy Cole and Tyler Bate. Yes, the big strong boy from England decided to pay us a visit. Now, in this match, a lot of people were riding on Happy Cole to win, but as soon as the match was taken to the outside, both Bate and Cole stopped doing it like the traditional way and just went full shoot fight on one another. Now, Happy Cole was able to down Tyler Bate. He slid in. But then I made a mistake of sliding right back out, thus restarting the count. And in the end, that's almost what costed him. So, after beating down Bates some more, even a brutal German suplex onto the floor, he went up top and went to do an elbow drop. And that spelled defeat for Happy Cole as he got dropped with the Tyler Driver 97. 1, 2, 3. Tyler Bate is now in the WKW Wolf Chamber and Happy Cole is not so happy right now. So then the fourth match we had was Akira Tozawa going one-on-one -on -one with Cameron Rose. So, we're going to see if Cameron Rose can put over two people in this video. And I will say, short answer spoiler is yes. Cameron Rose was looking for his big finisher, but not only did he miss, he got dropped not with the stalling bridge and German suplex, not with the drop zone senton, but with a shining wizard. 
That's right. Tazawa went for the Shining Wizard. He got it. One, two, three. And Cameron Rose is put over another person. Good job. I mean, wow. I have to say the mob is put over at least a quarter of the roster by this point. So then we had the second of the two WKW Chamber qualifying matches. Infamous going up against a mystery opponent who turned out to be Davey Supreme. Now, Infamous, of course, being a big, burly MMA fighter, was able to really bring the pain right onto Davey Supreme. But the new guy was able to drop Infamous with his Feynman's Carry TKO cutter. One, two, three. Supreme is, well, supremely excited about being inside the Wolf Chamber for the very first time. So before I get to the next match, there's a promo cut between Sky Slash and Kyle Noble where they're pretty much just doing their usual pull your dukes up, come on, come on, let me out, I'm not scared, I got courage, thing, until Sky tells Noble that, hey, you might have your vigilantes, I've got backup as well, and I've already cornered one of your men with one of my men, and now me and the other guy are going to go up against you and number one. And the other guy that Sky was talking about? Larry. Yes, that Larry. Now, this was a pretty good match, but it all fell apart towards the end when Noble was able to actually drop Sky with the Noble Sacrifice, and that essentially took Sky out of the match. And then number one was able to do his pump handle Falcon Arrow onto Larry. One... Two and right before Sky could get in, he saw that Kyle Noble was also in the right position on the ropes. And knowing that what likely would have happened wouldn't have even mattered, Sky froze up right then and there as the ref came down with the three count, meaning Kyle Noble has helped his posse get yet another victory. Now, speaking of the other guy, number two, he was on a singles match with Greg the Meadowhead who was the other person in Sky's little coalition of group against Kyle Noble and the Vigilantes. Now, these two were really bringing the pain. They were just constantly full countering out of each and every one of their big moves. And there were several times where just when you thought the number two was taken down, he would immediately sit up and stand like The Undertaker. And he did this multiple times. To a point where Greg had to pull the ultimate of last-ditch efforts, but then again at the same time, it automatically results in a reverse decision. Yes, I'm talking about that combo. The power bomb into the Boston Crab combo. The combo, which is downright banned! There's no doubt that both Sky and Larry are going to be unhappy at Greg for having to resort to that, since even though number two technically tapped out, and I hold this, I'm still putting it down. He tapped out, but number two is still your winner, since that combo apparently leads to an instant disqualification. I don't know, I read the rules here. But yeah, so Greg had a shot at beating a vigilante, but he threw it away by doing that combo. Fuck. Well, now we get on to the most recent episode of WDW, and thankfully, I was able to actually catch this one live. So I started out with the elites, who once again can't decide whether to fight for WKW or WDW, going up against Leo Carr and Zendahaku. Now, the elites have been kind of struggling lately, so you think Carr and Haku are able to get the win here easily, right? Wrong! Terry Terry was able to take out Haku on the outside, which leveraged Jess the Thumb to hit a brutal rising knee into Leo Carr's jaw, and the elites walk away with a victory after a rare solo finisher from Jess the Thumb. Okay, now, that move, I need to see more, please. The second match they did was the Street Profits going up against the Mohawk Bros, and right away, I got the implication that Juan might have had partied a little too hardy last night. He went for a running move, and wound up dead in the ring. Rest in peace. I'm just kidding. But really, 
That was a move that completely threw everyone else off guard. The Mohawk Bros, on the other hand, were still able to get the victory. They dropped Angelo Dawkins with the Mohawk combination. Montez Ford broke it up, only to be met immediately with a rude drop kick from Roman Ryder. And then Juan was able to drop Angelo with the Juan drop that little Uranagi of his 1 2 3. Mohawk Bros have redeemed themselves from last week. So, what happened next was another tag team match. It's not the fucking tag team Living Dead here. The Vigilantes once again clashing with the Wild Soldiers. Now, I will say though, this time it was not so rough on the Wild Soldiers. This time, the Wild Soldiers were almost ready for the competition. Maximus was able to do a couple big diving moves and completely shrug off a running attempt from number one. Well, I will say what a highlight of this match was, was when Bill Wildside, after being put into that standing lifting throat choke, just went into full Super Saiyan hillbilly mode, speared number one off the apron, baseball slide drop kicked through the turnbuckle to number two, and... Almost got a clean victory on either of the Vigilantes, but in the end, it, it didn't matter. After Maximus got completely wrecked with a choke slam, Bill Wildside got pinned by the Vigilantes once again after they completely crippled Wildside with that tequila sunrise to the diving splash on the leg to Huggins. He completely ran out trying to kick out after that. The Vigilantes won yet again. Hey, we get it. We know who the new tag team champs are going to be, but god damn, this is like the third or fourth week in a row where they've come across each other and the same result happens. Wow. The match that came next was another Wolf Chamber qualifying match for WDW, and Cameron Rose is actually throwing his name into the hat, but... His opponent is Kai Cassidy, and the deal has been made. Kai Cassidy was told he'd be facing a mystery opponent later tonight, and if he beat the said opponent, he'd get the spot in the Wolf Chamber. If he gets beat, then his opponent gets the spot. And, turns out Cameron Rose was that mystery person. So, this is actually a redemption match for Kai Cassidy, not only to get into the Rumble, I mean Chamber, but also because he's never beaten Cameron Rose before. Well, Rose tried to go for his big finisher at the end, and Hayate even tried to interrupt on his behalf. But at the end, Kai Cassidy was able to hit a frog splash onto Cameron Rose, one, two, and a three. Kai Cassidy not only beat Cameron Rose, he's moving on to the Wolf Chamber, so now we have two spots remaining to be filled next week. Now, the fifth match was Gavin Watkins. Huh. I actually found the energy to do that. Anyway, his opponent was Momoa from Samoa. And Momoa was made to look like a fucking joke. Oh, God damn it, Gavin, why? Anyway, like I said, this was a quick match. Watkins dropped Momoa with the Golden Driver for a quick victory. But then Chris Bay came out and challenged Gavin Watkins. Another match between the two next week. And I will have to ask confirmation on this. But I think if Chris Bay is able to beat Gavin Watkins, then Chris might be in chamber. I do not know the details on that. I will have to ask my friend Leo Coleslaw. See if he knows anything about if that's the case or not. But now... The main event and the final match of what I missed. Billy Huggins, one-on-one -on -one against the returning Real Deal Percy Lopez. Now, this match, a lot of people have seen what Percy Lopez can do, and so have I. So a lot of people assumed Percy was able to get an easy victory. That was not the case. Billy Huggins was able to really bring it out, bring all the beating around Percy Lopez's town, 
And even though, yes, I noticed Huggins got his head caught into the ropes at one point. That could have been very, very bad. Neck bones aren't supposed to bend like that. Billy was still able to get the win after he was able to counter a real driver and hit the hobo buster. One, two, three. The momentum for Huggins continues once more. Okay. I think that just about covers it up. Oh, I realized there was one little thing I have to talk about, but I'm going to talk about it while the credits roll. So, it appears that Q and Gabriel Pierce are going to probably have another match, but they're not fighting against each other. Gabriel Pierce will be fighting against an opponent of David Spencer's choosing, and Q will be in Pierce's corner. Hmm. I wonder what that'll lead to. Wonder if Sanchez will return and get involved. I don't know. Anyway, that's the recap. This is Icy Hot Jacob Scott saying, Feel the fire, fear the cold. Most importantly, have a good night.